Okay, we're going to st continue studying tensor properties, and uh, in this segment, we're going to look at something called the tensor product. So we're going to look at the tensor product which you've almost certainly encountered before in the form of the dyadic product. Okay? So the way this works is the following. If U and V belong to R3, meaning they are vectors, uh, and if A is a tensor, right, A belongs to GL3, we can define A equals the tensor product of U and V, which we will write in this form. Okay, so that's a cross inside a circle. Uh, we, will, we will read that as U tensor V. Okay, uh, so we will define that as A equals U tensor V. And of course, to understand what this really means, we can uh, look at it in terms of components, right? Or in terms of coordinate notation, right? So in coordinate notation, So in coordinate notation, the way we write that out is Aij equals Ui Vj, all right? Now, of course, A is a tensor, and if we had another vector there, A would act upon that vector. So let's consider what happens there. If W belonging to R3 is another vector, then A acting on W is U tensor V acting on W, which we write as U times V dot w. So this last line defines the action of uh, such a tensor product of vectors. Okay? In coordinate notation, what this means is that A i j w j is u i v j wj. Okay? You see how that works out. So, this is our tensor product and it has considerable uses. One of the most uh, important uses is that it allows us a way to uh, write out a tensor fully in terms of the basis vectors. Just as we know that we can write out a vector in terms of the basis vectors. Okay, so what this allows us to do is the following. Use this to uh, write any tensor uh, in terms of the basis vectors. Okay, so, so let's introduce another tensor here. Let's suppose we have B, okay, which belongs to GL3. Now, as you may imagine, we know what the components of B are, right? So we know that Bij equals Ei dotted with B E J. Okay, so we know this. The question we want to ask is, well, how do I rewrite the full tensor B using these components? The answer is the following. We can write out B is B 
i j e i tensor e j. Note that in this uh, right hand side, the indices i and j both are repeated and therefore a sum is implied over i and j. Okay? And just to check that this works, uh, let's go back and uh, see how we what we get for the components of B if it's written in this form. Okay, so check. Uh, given this, we know that B say K L is E K dotted with B E L, which is E K dotted with B I J E I tensor E J E L. Okay. Now, if we look at this uh, product going on the right hand side, what we know is that E J dot E L essentially gives us the corresponding Kronecker delta, right? And likewise, E K here dotted with E I also gives us a Kronecker delta, okay? So we have here B I J, E K dotted with E I gives us delta K I. And then knowing the properties of this uh, tensor product and how it acts upon vectors, what we saw on the previous slide, we know that E J dotted with E L gives us delta J L, okay? The Kronecker deltas do their job and convert uh, B i j to B k l. Okay? So that works out. Okay? So this is a very useful way in which to expand out tensors once we're given a basis. Another use of this uh, tensor product is to form what we will call projection tensors, which turn out to be very useful in uh, writing out uh, expressions, um, especially in terms of uh, stress-strain relationships when we, when we get to them, okay? The other use, therefore, is, okay, is to define what we will call a projection tensor. All right? And here is how this works. Um, suppose um, that, let's say, um, T is a vector. Okay? Uh, suppose further that T is a unit vector, right? It's just some arbitrary unit vector we've chosen. Suppose that T belongs to R3 and that the magnitude of T is 1, okay? Now, um, suppose we then consider another vector U belonging to R3, okay? we have the following. U dotted with T, we know is simply the magnitude of U or the projection of U along this vector T, okay? All right? If we take this projection of U along T and multiply it by the vector T itself, okay, then what we have is a vector along t, but of size u dot t, okay? So we can call this, um, we, we have u dot t multiplying t uh, is the vector u projected along T, 
Okay. The way we can write this out better is by uh, defining defining this projection tensor and we are going to call it P sub T. Okay. It's a tensor. Okay. And we will define it as T tensor T. Okay. It's easy enough now to check that this projection tensor acting on U is u dot t times t. Okay? Right? So this is a useful application of the tensor product. Uh, we may call this often the sort of tangential projection of u on t, right? Because it really gives us u along t. So, so here's the idea. It is as if we have u and we have T, okay? By the action of, of this projection tensor P sub T on U, we essentially end up with another vector uh, which is along T, okay? But has magnitude U dotted with T. Okay, so this is the action of P on U. All right, so we may write this as pictorially, we may write this as P sub T acting on U. Okay, so this is what we would call the tangential projection, right? So we may therefore call this the tangential projection. The idea is that T is a tangent vector and, and so we're projecting U along this tangent, okay? What that also lets us do is to define the normal projection, okay? So this also lets us define the normal projection. Okay, which we will denote as P sub N. Okay? That can be defined easily as P sub N is simply this tensor which we introduced in the previous segment minus P sub T. Okay? And to check how this works, let's see what its action is upon U. Right? Um, check. P sub n acting on u is this minus P sub t acting on u, okay? Using the linearity of the addition and subtraction of tensors, we have this minus P sub t acting on u. All right? But this, remember, when we write it out as a matrix, is simply our identity matrix. So 1 acting on U gives us back U. Okay? Whereas on the right, for the next term, we have U dot T along T. Okay? So what we have here is the following. We have our vector U. We have a projection, a vector T along which we want to project U. Okay? And so we have here, suppose we have, this is um, P sub T acting on U, okay? Now, U minus this is essentially this vector minus that vector, right? Which is essentially... Um, Okay? Observe 
that this guy, this new vector is perpendicular to T, okay, by construction, okay. So for this reason, we will often call P n u as the normal projection tensor.